Hi everyone, I hope that you're having a wonderful day and for today's video we're going to be doing a little cleaning and conditioning of two different style boots. We're going to be looking at a pair of lizard boots that have a dry type finish in a dyed color. So with these it's going to require a special kind of cleaning or a special kind of conditioner and that's what we're going to talk about today. I also have a pair of snake boots that also has that matte finish and dyed colors. So this is gonna be the same application for both of these boots. So guys, let's get right into this boot cleaning and I'm gonna be showing you the supplies that you're gonna need in order to accomplish this. The first item that we're gonna be needing in order to clean and condition these boots is Saphir Napa. Saphir Napa contains jojoba oil and this is specially formulated to not change or alter the color of your boots or the skin that you're trying to use them on. So this is gonna be perfect in order to keep the matte finish on the snake boots as well as these lizard boots. So guys, this is a special product that you're gonna be using and the color may slightly change just because you're rehydrating the skin, but you're not actually altering anything. So this is what you're gonna be needing. There's gonna be a link in the description down below so you guys can pick this up if you want to. The next item that you may need is a toothbrush. If your boots are really dirty along the edges or in the creases, then you may need a toothbrush in order to get whatever dust and dirt out of there. So that's what the toothbrush is for. Another item that you're gonna be needing to apply your Sophia Napa onto your boots is a piece of cloth or a piece of a white t-shirt that you may just cut up, get a piece of, and this is gonna help you apply that Saphir Napa right onto your boots. My personal preference is a piece of white t-shirt and this is what I'm gonna use for today's video. The last item that you're gonna need is a brush and you're gonna use this brush towards the end of the process once you've applied the Saphir Napa and it's dry or it's almost dry, you're gonna gently buff your boots and this is just gonna complete the process for you. Also, an optional item that you may wanna have on while you're cleaning and conditioning your boots is an apron. This is an apron that I created and you can find a link in the description down below that'll take you to my shop where you can find it in different colors. And in case you also wanna use it for barbecuing, this apron works perfect for that as well. So now guys, let's get right into the cleaning of these boots and I'm actually gonna be cleaning the left-hand side of both of these boots so that we can later compare them to the right-hand side and see if anything changed at all. So I want you guys to use this video as a reference so that you can see if there's any change at all and I'll be the guinea pig in this case so that you don't ruin your boots in the process of trying to clean them and hydrate them for your next wear. So now let's get right into the cleaning process. So you're going to want to take your cloth, wrap it around your finger, dab it into your Saphir Napa, and then you're going to want to grab your boot and you're going to want to gently put the conditioner onto your boots. So you're just going to apply it onto them gently. In this case, you may not want to rub the boots too much and have some of the dye colors go all over the place. You're just probably better off going in one motion in one direction, whether it be forward, like what I'm doing here in this case, or side to side. And you're gonna to want to get some of this cleaning solution and conditioning solution right into the creases. So don't fear of over putting some of this on here. It's going to dry and it's going to make your boots look real good guys. So don't hesitate with this. Just kind of follow one motion just because we don't know what this is going to do to these boots. We don't want to get too carried away and do circular motions and get the dye all spread out. We are gonna see some of the dye come off of these boots and that's normal and that's typical of any boots. So if you see this guys, don't worry, it's not a problem. It's real common. This is just bound to happen. And that's why this product shines, right? Because we're trying to maintain this matte finish or this look on these boots without turning them real dark and altering 
and changing the color of these boots. So right now these are looking good. I'm gonna get the conditioner right into these creases so that you guys can see how it's hydrating the boots. And like I said, this is the left hand side boot and we're gonna compare it to the right hand side once we're done and this is dry and we're gonna see what changed or what didn't change. And what we're hoping for is that this doesn't change much at all. If it changes a little bit, that's okay. And this may be just because you're hydrating the boot. And with time, this is gonna go back to that same matte finish look and it's not gonna look like anything changed on here at all. So what we're trying to accomplish here is keeping this boot from altering its color as much as possible. Not 100% because I think that that's probably impossible, but we're trying to keep it about 90% or so from changing. So now with a different portion of the cloth, we're gonna go ahead and start conditioning this boot. And we're just gonna go in a specific direction and we're gonna try to work this a little bit into the scale so we can get them to settle. And this boot, you can see that it's darkening up, but guys, you're hydrating them. So it's automatically gonna do that because you're basically wetting them. But we're gonna wait to see how these look once they're completely dry. And hopefully we don't have much of a color change, which is what we're trying to look for in this process of using this special product because it was developed and formulated so that your boots don't have any color change or alteration. So like I was telling you guys, I wanted to do this and test this out on my boots first so that I'm the one who's doing it to them and in case they mess up, it's my boots and not yours. So I'm sure this is gonna work and they're gonna look great in the end and the color should not change much at all. And they are getting rehydrated. So it may change just slightly, but that's just because like I was saying, they're a little bit more wet, but with time and in doing both of them, these are gonna match up um, to each other, but we're gonna get a side-by-side -side comparison of a boot that is clean and conditioned and one that is not so that you guys can get a good visual. You can see that these boots turned into a dark, dark brown right now, but it's just because they're getting rehydrated guys. And I'm sure the outcome is gonna be exactly what we're looking for in this process once these boots are completely dry. And if you get some of this cleaner and conditioner on the shaft, again, no need to worry, that's gonna be okay. Just when you're buffing these later on in the process, the shaft is gonna be the last thing that you may wanna hit the edges of because you don't want any of that dye to come onto your boots because it's a different skin. In this case, the shaft of these boots is goat leather and the bottom of this vamp, or the vamp is in, in its entirety, it's python. So now that both of these left hand side boots are done, we're gonna go ahead and give them some time so that we can come back and buff these boots out with our brush and you want to make sure that your brush is clean and you may want to have multiples for your different boots so that you don't have issues getting different colors onto them so again i'm going to provide you guys with a link in the description down below where you can pick up some of these brushes so that they can help you in the process of cleaning and conditioning your boots and you can use multiples so that you don't get any of the different dyes onto your different boots. Alrighty y'all, so it's been a little over two hours and now we're gonna check out the results. I can tell you that I can automatically see that these Nolan Lizard boots are almost fully dried and they look to me, like they're gonna look exactly like the original. The Python, on the other hand, they look like they're not completely dry yet, 
and I can tell you that they're looking a little darker, but you can still see the matte finish on them. And I think that they may be just a touch or a small shade darker than the original. Before I conditioned these and nourished them with the Saphir Napa, these were super dry guys, so I expected them to darken up at least a touch. So that's why I mentioned that they would probably go back to the original color as far as like a 90%, but not quite 100% because they just look super dry. So now we're gonna bring the right side boot, which has not been conditioned for each of these boots, and we're gonna give you a side-by-side -side comparison of what you can expect. Of course, once you condition both, they're each going to match each other, so that won't be a problem. This is simply to give you a good view of what you can expect as a result when you're using Saphir Napa in this process. So let's go ahead and bring the boots in. So here we have the right boot that has not been conditioned at all, not even once. And here we have the left boot, which I just conditioned and you can see the difference in the color. Of course this boot is not fully dried yet so you can expect it to lighten up just a touch but it's not going to lighten up completely to the original. So once you condition the right boot then they're going to match perfectly and you're still getting a good look on these boots but I just wanted to show you the results and I'm showing you this before I hit these boots with a brush just because I think that the brush adds a tiny bit of a sheen to them. So I wanted to give you a direct side-by-side -side without brushing them at all. As you can see, the left boot did darken up a bit in comparison to the right boot. Hi guys, Sweet Your Dennis here, and I just wanted to be as detailed and thorough with you guys and show you the results of these boots once they were fully dry. So here we can see these boots after 24 hours of dry time. And we can see that the color change on these really became minimal. And I'm happy with the results on both of these boots. Now let's move on to these lizard boots. So here we can see that the left boot, which has been conditioned, looks almost exactly like the right boot, which has not been conditioned at all. So guys, get a close up of these boots and you can see that they match almost exactly. So I'm real happy with the results on these. And I just think that the lizard boot dried a little bit faster than the python boot. So now that you saw the results that you can expect to see with the Saphir Napa, I'm gonna go ahead and brush these boots just to give you a little look at what happens. I'm sure that they're probably gonna get a small sheen to them, but nothing too dramatic. But I'm just used to using a brush on my boots once I fully condition them just so that that conditioner gets worked in there just a little more. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with these lizard boots. Now that I have them here, I'm gonna do this left boot which has already been conditioned. So you're just gonna to wanna to hit these boots with a brush from side to side. Don't go too crazy on them. They don't need it much at all. And just get into the grooves and go around the boot. You can get close to the shaft. Don't work too much into the shaft because you don't want to accidentally pull any of the dyes in. But this is almost completely dry, so that shouldn't be an issue at all. Now I'm going to turn the boot around and hit the back side of the boot. So now that I have this left boot conditioned, I'm going to move it to the side and I'm going to do a quick brushing on the Python boots so I can show you what that'll look like and on here you may not see it quite well but even though I'm brushing I'm gonna try to keep the scales in that forward direction and not hit them too hard just so that I'm not peeling them completely back Now I'm going to turn the boot around and I'm going to go in the direction of the scales. And again, I'm going to hit the front a little more. It may look kind of like I'm brushing back and forth, but I'm trying to brush forward and not backwards and not lift the scales too much. They are a little lifted, but if I hit them with a little bit more Saphir Napa, I'm sure those will settle back down. So now here we have a side-by-side -side 
of a fully conditioned left boot and a right boot that has not been touched at all. So again, this is what you can expect when you condition these boots with Saphir Napa. You're gonna see a little bit of a change on here. I expect it to dry just a little bit more and lighten up just a little bit more. But these aren't gonna go fully back to the original color that you're seeing on the right hand side. So let me know in the comments down below if this is something that you're comfortable with as far as a color change or if you're gonna try or may try a different product to get a better outcome. But I'm happy with the results and I actually like a little bit of the darker color that these got on here. So I'm happy with it and I'm sure that if I hit these with a little bit more of that Saphir Napa, these scales will settle down just a tad bit more. But you can see how lifted the scales are on the boot that we have here on the right side that these scales are just sitting way up higher so the conditioner does its job and nourishes these boots in the process but you may or will see a little bit of a color change so i hope that this video helped you and showed you what you can expect when you use a product like Saphir napa i want to thank you guys so much for watching and until next time bye you guys